for your presence in our midst. Thank you for the privilege that we have, O oh God, to come into your presence. Thank you for the gathering of your people, O oh God. Our gathering is not unto anyone, but our gathering is unto you. All nations that you have made will come and worship and bow at your feet. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how awesome he is. He's wonderful. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the El Shaddai, the King of Glory. Thank you, yes. Oh, we welcome you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Just just lift it up, yeah. Amen, amen. And now, yes. let the weak say, I am strong. Just, just worship him. Oh yes, he says, let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the things you have done. For the things you have done, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. Oh God, thank you. Thank you. We come with a grateful heart this morning, oh God. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come into your presence. We come into your grace with thanksgiving. We come into your court with praise. We've come to say this is the day that you have made and will rejoice and will be glad in it. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good and his mercies endure forever. Let everything that has breath begin to praise the name of the Lord. Oh, we welcome you. Thank you. We give you thanks. We hallow you. Hallowed be your name, O oh God. Hallowed be your name. We give you thanks. We bless your name. Sweet Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we give you thanks. Oh, Manda Kabiata. Oh, just worship him. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Who is like unto thee, O God? You alone are worthy. You sit in the heavens. You sit upon the circles of the earth. Glory, glory, hallelujah to your name. We worship you. We join the host of heaven, O God, in bowing before you. We lay down our crowns, O God. We lay down our crowns. We lay down our degrees. We lay down, O God, our prestige and our reputation. And we lay flat before you, O God. We lay flat before you in thanksgiving and in worship. Thank you. Thank you for the things you have done. Thank you for the things you are doing. Thank you for the things that you will do, O oh God. Oh, we give you thanks. We worship you. Thank you, O oh God, because in this place, there will be a demonstration of your spirit and your power in our midst, O oh God. Let there be signs and wonders, O oh God. Let there be prophetic utterances, O oh God. Let there be activations. Let there be graces in this place, O oh God. As we lift up our voice in worship and praise. Father, we thank you for joy unspeakable that is full of glory. Let it overflow, O oh God, in this place. Thank you because we are not the same because we came, O oh God. Uh, thank you for the liberty of the Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Father. We experience liberty. We experience joy. We experience satisfaction, O oh God. Uh, oh, we welcome you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let everything be done, O oh God, in this atmosphere of worship, Father. We come against every contrary spirit. We ask, O oh God, that it is only your grace and your name that will be glorified in this place. Glorify and beautify this place, Father, with your glory. Thank you for everyone that are on their way. Father, we ask that you bring them here safely in the name of Jesus. Just begin to ask the Lord, say, Father, send a word to me today. Let your word minister unto me. Let your word minister unto me. Let it minister life. Let it minister hope. Let it instruct. Let it correct. Let it direct me this morning. Just begin to ask him. Say, Lord, send forth your word. Your word of wisdom. Your word of wisdom. Let it come unto me. Your word of wisdom. Let it come unto me. Oh, Father, we give you thanks. We bless your holy name. We worship your God. Thank you, Father. Everyone that is watching online, Father, we ask that you touch them. You reach them with your word. You reach them with your instructions in the name of Jesus. 
Oh, Father, we pray. We ask that you anoint your servant this morning. You anoint all the instrumentalists so that your name and your name will be praised, oh God, by the power of your spirit. Father, we recognize our limitation and we ask, we receive grace, oh God, by your spirit this morning. Let your name and only your name be glorified. Father, we thank you. To you alone be all the praise. To you alone be all the glory. We appreciate you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the things you will do, oh God. We bless your holy name forever. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we're just going to continue in our praise. We're going to start by praising and worshiping the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
We just gonna say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Let's just 
Yeah. 
can stand against you and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with you then what could stand say and if our God is for us then who could ever and if our God then what can stand just going to stay at this moment right here. We went from celebration all the way to worship, and we worship the King of Kings because he is worthy to be praised. The song simply says, Adonai.
Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. I don't think you are convinced about that. I said God is good. And all the time. Hallelujah. Let's just give the Lord a clap offering and just worship him in spirit and in truth. He alone is worthy to be praised and adored. He deserves all the glory. Almighty God, we thank you. We praise your holy name. Receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. Receive all the adoration, O oh God. We give you thanks. We give you praise. You alone are worthy to be worshipped and adored. There is none like unto thee, O oh God, in all the earth. We humbly come before your presence this morning, O oh God, to partake of your mercy, to receive of your grace. Lord, to be blessed, to be blessed from on high. Lord, we ask for your hand to rest upon us. Lord, we want to experience your presence. Lord, to know your love, to be filled with your spirit, to be empowered. Lord, to know your glory, O oh God. Father, we give you thanks. You are our God and we are your children. We choose to abide in your presence all the days of our lives. Oh God, we worship you. Oh, we bless your holy name. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. Father, we give you thanks. Receive all the glory, Lord. Receive all the honor, Lord. All the adoration is unto you. Oh, blessed be your holy name. Your name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. We are safe in your name. You are a refuge and a fortress unto us, Lord God. Oh, we thank you. You are our shepherd. We shall not want. Oh, you are our shield and our buckler. You are our defense, our light and our salvation. Oh, blessed be your holy name. Receive all the glory, receive all the honor, receive all the adoration. There is none besides thee. You are God and there is none other. Blessed be your holy name. You are the one that reigns in our affairs. You are the one that reigns in the, in the affairs of men. Lord, we commit all unto you, Lord God. There is nothing that is too hard for you to do for us, O oh God. There is nothing that is too hard, O oh Lord. Oh, with you all things are possible. Oh, blessed be your name. Oh, there is nothing that is impossible for you, O oh God. Ha. So we put all our trust in you. All our faith is in you. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Father, as your word comes forth this morning, I pray in the name of Jesus. Anoint me afresh to minister your word, not in enticing words of man's wisdom, but rather in the demonstration of your spirit and your power so that the faith of your people rests in your power alone. Cause me to speak as your oracle, to minister with the power of your spirit, with the ability that only you can supply. In the name of Jesus, I declare, every yoke in our lives is broken right now. Every yoke of sickness, every yoke of bondage is destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every affliction, hallelujah, flees from us in the mighty name of Jesus. For we are more than conquerors. Lord, you have given unto us victory. Oh, mighty Father, you have given unto us victory. Over every storm, over every affliction, mighty God, we receive victory right now in the name of Jesus. We receive strength, oh God. We receive the wisdom that comes from heaven. We receive your light. We receive an abundance of your grace. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 
Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning I'm going to be sharing on what I've titled and probably be a series created in God's image and likeness. Created in God's image and likeness. And the Lord wants each and every one of us to know that we've been created in his image and likeness. But a lot of times we find that men are not living, those who are in Christ Jesus, are not living according to God's image and God's likeness. Let us go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. From verse 26, this was on the sixth day when God created man. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let us make man like us. Amen. That's really what God said. Let us make man like us. Let us make man uh, to possess uh, the same nature that we possess. It was the only creation of God uh, that God said, let us make man in our image. He says, let them have uh, dominion uh, or rulership over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, And over the cattle, over all the earth, uh, and over every creeping thing uh, that creeps on earth. God has given you dominion over every creep. (laughs) Amen. So God created man uh, in his own image. In the image of God, uh, he created him uh, male and female, he created them. Amen. So God created man in two forms, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them. After creating them, God blessed them, God empowered them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Have dominion. Because God himself uh, is a God of dominion. Amen. And when God, when God said, uh, have dominion, what he was giving man uh, was his ability to have dominion on earth. Amen. When the Bible says, uh, walk in love, uh, it is because God himself is love. When the Bible says, uh, conduct yourself in holy, be holy, for the Lord your God also is what? Holy. Amen. So when the scripture says, uh, have dominion, it's because God himself uh, exists in dominion. And what he is giving you is of himself. Amen. God will not call you or command you to do something he has not deposited on the inside of you. That will make him unjust. That would make him unfair. That is, if you are telling someone to do something they do not have the ability or the capacity to do, that is unfair. You have sentenced that person to what? Failure. So when God said, uh, I am making you in my image and according to my likeness, uh, and now I am telling you to go and what? have dominion, because you are in my image and you are according to my likeness, you have the ability within you to have dominion. Amen. When God says, look, why can we walk and function in the power of God? Because God himself is power. Amen. The Bible says concerning Jesus Christ, he is seated at the right hand of the power. God himself is power. He is our strength. And because he is, we are in the world. As he is, so are we in the world. Amen. So he blessed them and said, 
Be fruitful. I have empowered you to be fruitful. Multiply. I have empowered you to multiply. Hallelujah. There should never be any thought in your mind that God does not want you to increase. The nature of God is increase. The Bible says, Paul planted, Apollos watered, but God did what? Gave the increase. God is in the business of increasing. Increasing you in every area of your life. Multiplying you in every area of your life. And so he said, I have given you dominion so that you can do these things. Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Now, God didn't just give that blessing to man. He gave it to the animals as well. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, it says, When he created the fish of the sea, God blessed them saying, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters in the sea and let birds multiply on the earth. So that blessing to multiply came on all of his creation. But only to man did God say, I am making you in my image and according to my likeness. And it is only you that will have, because you have been created in my image and likeness, you will do what? Have dominion. God created man to have dominion. Amen. Amen. God created man. Now, that dominion is not for you to now go and say, look, you listen to me. I have dominion. That is not what I'm talking about. Amen. Because the dominion of God, uh, that is, we exercise dominion as God has given us dominion. God uses his dominion to do certain things. And only those who are in alignment with his will will execute the dominion of God. Amen. So it's not right for you to say, you, I have dominion. That, that's not what we're talking about. Because that one, that, that is witchcraft. You want to now control people. That is not what God is saying. Amen. Let's continue. I just want you to meditate on that word on its own. That you have been created in God's image. What does that mean? How does that affect your life? How does that affect your conduct? How does that affect the way you speak? You have been created. This is the beginning of man. You have been created in the very image of the God who created heaven and earth. You are patterned after him. God patterned us after himself. He says, I caught, you are going to be like me on earth. I have given you authority on earth. I, my throne is in heaven. I have placed you as my representative, as my ambassador upon the earth to execute my will on earth as it is in what? Heaven. That is, you execute my dominion on earth as it is in heaven. That's why Jesus taught his disciples to pray, thy kingdom come. What he was praying for was the dominion of God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. What he was praying for was dominion. In the book of Daniel, it says, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion is from generation to generation. You do according to your will amongst men. In the book of Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar thought, hey, it was my power and might that got me all this wealth and all this glory. God show, well, let me show you that it is me that rules it is me that is in dominion in the affairs of men. If you remove yourself from my will, that authority and dominion, I will take it from you. And I will give it to the one who will humble himself under my mighty hand. Amen. Dominion was taken, earthly dominion was taken from Nebuchadnezzar because he thought it was his own power, his own might that gave him the kingdom. And God said, no. And he became like a beast eating grass until he learned that it is heaven that rules in the affairs of men. 
The Bible says in Daniel 7, says, Then to him, talking about Christ, was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should do what? Serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which cannot pass away, and his kingdom, the one which shall not be destroyed. That's the dominion we're talking about. That dominion that God has given unto us so that all people, all nations, all languages uh, would serve God. That's the purpose of his dominion to us. That is the purpose that God has given us his grace uh, so that uh, we can gather all those who are in rebellion unto him uh, in Christ Jesus uh, so that all peoples, uh, all nations, and all languages uh, will serve him. Amen. That's the purpose of his dominion. To bring, uh, and we'll soon understand why. It was because of Adam. Adam disobeyed God when he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The enemy, serpents, came to Eve, deceived her. What did the enemy say? If you eat of it, you'll be like God. Were they not already like God? Had God not already created them like himself? And here, he comes and says, on the day you eat of it, let's look there, Genesis. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. God had already created them like him. Amen. And so the enemy came with a temptation that did God actually say this? You will not surely die. You will not die. And he twisted the words. And Adam too ate of it. And as a result of that, sin entered into the domain of man. Sin entered, and the Bible says, and death came uh, through sin. And all the glory and the dominion that man had, that God had given him, he handed over to who? Satan. That's why Satan, uh, 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 when he was tempting Jesus, could say, all this authority has been given unto me. And if you will just bow down and worship me, I will give it to you. And Jesus said, you shall serve no other God but God. Only him shall you serve. And he resisted that temptation. Amen. Amen. Let's continue. Psalm 8 verse 3 to 9 says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him? That is, God has got you on his mind. Amen. I mean, just think about it. What the example that came to me was someone that is dating someone. They're like, ah, she's always on my mind. She's always, and the girl here is, ah, really? Oh. Do you understand? In this, now, just think, God has you on his mind. The same way a guy who is interested in a guy has that he tells you, you're always on my mind. I can't, I can't, I'm always thinking about you. And she goes, oh. God has you on his mind. That he is always looking for a way. That is how is he going to elevate you? How is he going to increase you? How is he going to multiply you? How is he going to what? Bless you. God has you on his mind. Says, what is man that you are mindful? And Satan hates it. He's envious of it. And so his own is to destroy that connection. To blind you from what God has on his mind for you. He says, and the son of man, that you don't only have me on your mind, you're always visiting me. Hey. Hallelujah. You want God to visit you. It is like God is pursuing you. Amen. Amen. And some open the door, and some don't. Hallelujah. May you not be the one that doesn't open the door. 
Amen. He said that you visit him, for you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with what? Glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. He says, I have given you dominion. And through the sin of Adam, man lost that dominion. He lost that ability, that power to execute God's will on earth in his fullness. Hallelujah. But Jesus Christ came to restore that. The Bible says, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would do- believe in him uh, would not what perish but have everlasting life. That which Adam lost. In fact, Adam was sent out of the Garden of Eden so that he would not have access to the tree of life. Christ has come uh, to restore access to that tree of life. Amen. Bible says he has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Because that life, uh, when it is operational within us, that nature of God uh, produces that dominion. Amen. It produces. Let's continue. Let's look at Romans chapter 3, verse 21. It says, But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, uh, to all and on all who believe, uh, for there is no difference, uh, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned, uh, and fall short of the glory of God, being justified by, freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That it is through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, we are restored back unto that glory. Amen. That it is through Christ that we are now able to manifest the glory of God. Jesus Christ came to demonstrate the manifestation of the glory of God. That when you connect, your God, connect with God through faith, you will manifest my dominion, you will manifest my glory, you will manifest my power, you will manifest my righteousness, you will manifest my love, you will manifest my holiness. Why? Because you have been created in my image and according to my likeness. Amen. That is, in your mind, it should be that, now, I'll ask, can God be sick? Have you ever heard of God being sick? No no answer. No. Can you conceive God being sick? No. So why do we allow sickness to dwell in our bodies? If we have been created in the image and in the likeness of God, why do we permit an illegal occupant? Don't you understand that your body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body is the temple of the Spirit of God. It is like me saying in your house, do you allow rats to run rampant in your house? Or do you allow snakes to just say, hey, there's a snake. Or, uh, do you not get rid of them? Those poisonous things, uh, do you not eliminate them because uh, it is not, you cannot dwell in the same space. You have been created uh, in the likeness of God. The Bible says God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. That is, if, it says therefore walk in the light as he is in the light so that you have fellowship with one another. There should not be any area of darkness. That is, uh, we are sons of the light because God is light. 
We walk in love because God is love. If we are created in it, that's why the scripture says, that is we walk in power because God he, he, he is power. And that's why the scripture says God has given unto us not the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is not the nature of God. The spirit of fear is not the image of God. The spirit of anxiety, that is not the image of God. That is not according to the likeness of God. The spirit of unbelief is not according to the image or likeness of God. The spirit of infirmity is not according to the image or the likeness of God. God has not given you the spirit of fear or of anxiety. The spirit that God has given you is a spirit of what? power and of love and of a sound mind, a spirit of self-control so that you do not yield to temptation. That is the spirit that you possess. God has given you his own spirit in Christ Jesus. Jesus came to restore the glory. He came to restore the dominion that man had when he was first created. Hallelujah. Romans 5 verse 10 says, For if we were enemies, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world. So sin gained entrance into the world through one man. That man's name was Adam. So just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin... And thus, death spread to all men because all sinned. That is, the minute Adam sinned, he corrupted his nature. His nature was transformed from one that received life to one that existed in death. It says, for until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to what? Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. What is that gift? Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life. The very nature of God. That is what makes God God. He has come to give you that which is according to his image and according to his likeness. The more you receive of him, the more you become like him. Amen. Verse 17 now says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will do what? Reign. Or you can say have dominion in life through the one Jesus Christ. Amen. He came to restore that dominion by infusing us with his very life. That is transforming us, uh, getting us to be conformed to the very image he created. Hallelujah. Let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. From verse 45, it says, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being or a living soul. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. There was the first, and then there was the last. The first man, 
Adam became a living being when God breathed life into him. It says, but the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. In Christ Jesus, God ended the Adamic race. Jesus Christ is called the last what? Adam. He ended the Adamic race uh, with Christ. And from Christ, uh, God created what the Bible calls a new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. There is a restoration of the glory and the power and the dominion uh, that God has prepared for man. You are a new creation uh, in Christ Jesus. You are no longer according to the Adamic race. Christ has become the first of a new creation. Hallelujah. But on earth, you have what the Bible calls the first man and the second man. Christ is the second man. Adam was the first man. Jesus became the last Adam and created a new race. And if you believe in him, uh, you switch from that Adamic race that God has called obsolete. And you shift uh, into another kingdom, the kingdom of the son of his love. You are translated because that Adamic race is still subject to death. That Adamic race uh, is still subject to sin. As a new creation, the Bible says, uh, sin shall no longer have what? Dominion over you. For you are no longer under the law, but you are now under what? Grace. You are now under grace, the grace that Christ has come to give us. So sin, no longer, Adam by obeying the desires of sin became subject to sin, and through sin came death. But the Bible says now there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of what? Sin and death. You've been set free. The life that is in Christ Jesus has produced something else in you. A new creation has taken place that has been created according to the image of Christ. Amen. We are now being conformed uh, to the image uh, of Christ. And there's a reason for that. Let's finish 1 Corinthians 15. It says, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first. But the natural and afterward the spiritual. So the life giving spirit is that which is spiritual. The living soul is that which is natural. However, the spiritual is not first but the natural and afterward the spiritual. The first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So on earth you have two types of men. Those who are after the first man which is an Adamic race that Jesus says, I'm the last one. After me, there's none other. I'm ending this race. That God's grace, God's power is now upon the second man and those who come after him. Amen. God's anointing is for those who are after the second man, according to his image and in his likeness. There is no grace upon the first man. Said so the first man was of the earth, uh, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of the dust. Uh, and as is the heavenly man, so also are those uh, who are what? Heavenly. The day you got born again, the Bible says you became a citizen of what? Heaven. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, uh, we shall also bear the what? 
image of the what? Heavenly man. And that is why when Nicodemus came to Jesus and said, uh, no one can do these things unless God is with him, he said, that is not the answer. He says, unless you are what? Born again, born from above, born from heaven, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are, he was still thinking about the natural man. He said, can a man enter his mother's womb? He was still thinking about the natural man. And Jesus was talking to him about that which was what? Spiritual. That which was heavenly. That which was born from above. Not born of the will of man. Not born of flesh and blood. But born of what? The spirit. It says unless you are born of the spirit and of water, you cannot do what? Enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These things can only come to those who are what? Spiritual. Born of the Spirit. Hebrews chapter 1, listen to what it says. From verse 1. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his what glory and the express image of his person. Jesus Christ is the brightness of God's glory. He is the express image of God's person. This is why the scripture says that God wants us to be conformed unto the image of Christ. Because Christ is the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his, his one that gives expression to the image of God. Do you understand that? Christ is our example of who how the glory of God and the person of God is manifested. He did that for us while he lived upon the earth. What he was demonstrating was the glory of God. The Bible says at the wedding of Cana, Jesus turned water into wine, and it says that these were the beginning of his signs when he manifested what? His glory. So said these were the beginning of the miracles. When he manifested his glory, whose glory was he manifesting? The glory of God. Once you receive it, it has become yours, but ultimately it originates from God. It would be foolish to think, this is my glory, <laughs> disconnecting yourself from the source. Bible says, these were the beginning of what? The signs. These were the beginning of the miracles uh, when he manifested uh, his glory. What he was manifesting was the image of God. <laughs> Where God is, there will be no lack. There will always be an abundance of supply of whatever you need. Even if it means turning water into wine. And if it was water they needed and not wine, God would have turned wine into water. Do you understand what I'm saying? It matters not to God. This manifestation of his glory. When his friend Lazarus died and his sister said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, look, I'm the resurrection and the life. Let me show you what the life of God can produce. He says, if you believe, you will see what? The glory of God. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. What was he demonstrating? The image of God. What was he expressing? The likeness of God. He said, what he said, I am, is, it, I am what God is. Hallelujah. As he is, so am I in the world. He said, I am the resurrection of the life. If you believe in me, your brother will rise up again. He says, did I not tell you, if you believe, you shall do what? See the glory. That it requires faith. You will see the glory of God. You will see the image and the likeness of God revealed. When he healed the sick, when he opened the eyes of the blind, when he executed power, what was he expressing? The very image and the likeness of God. 
When he spoke with wisdom, and they said, what kind of wisdom is this? What kind of word is this? What was he expressing? Uh, the very image uh, of God. He was the brightness of God's glory. Hallelujah. The light emanating uh, from the glory of God. That's who he is. And that is who we are being conformed unto. When they were in the boat, and they said, don't you care that we perish? Jesus was like, don't you understand? You have been created in the image and the likeness of God. And he said, peace be still. Because he had a consciousness of his dominion. Who, whose image? He, he said, My, me and the Father are one. Why could he say that? If you see me, you've seen the Father. Because I have been created in his image and in his likeness. When you see me, you have seen my Father. Amen. When you hear me speak, what you are hearing is what I've heard from him. Hallelujah. That is when you think like this, there's no excuse to fail. Because your foundation is you have been created in the image and in the likeness of God. So God said, let me send my son who will not fail, who will represent as in human form the possibility of manifesting. He will not be tempted, but he will not yield to the temptation of the enemy. Amen. Like Adam did and brought death. That is, my son will obey my words to the very end, even to the point of death, so that those who believe in him will gain access. Hallelujah. It will no longer be dependent on you. It will not be dependent on your faith in him. Hallelujah. To become a partaker of the divine nature. Your faith in him is what will qualify you to become a partaker of the divine nature. That is, Christ has done the work. We are entering into his labor. Hallelujah. He says, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of God, the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. The Amplified puts it this way. The sun is the radiance and only expression of the glory of our awesome God, reflecting God's Shekinah glory, the light being, the brilliant light of the divine, and the exact representation and perfect imprint of his Father's essence, and upholding and maintaining and propelling all things, the entire physical and spiritual universe, by his powerful word, Carrying the universe along to its predetermined goal. That's the Amplified. The new Amplified. The traditional classic Amplified puts it this way. He is the sole expression of the glory of God. The light being, the outrain or radiance of the divine. And he is the perfect imprint and very image of God's nature, upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power. Amen. So you see now, when you are in prayer, it's not like you are begging God, I need to speak a word of power. That is your nature. If you have been created in the image and the likeness of God, the words you speak must be words of eternal life because he has given, up, given us of his life. The words you speak must be words of power, but it's all dependent on our fellowship with him. Amen. The more we fellowship with him, the more we are transformed to the same image so that we can speak like him and walk like him and do the works that he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1 puts it this way. That's why it says that I may know him and the power of his life. You want to know Christ. Why? Because you want to be continually transformed. Amen. You, are, you want that transformation from glory to glory. Amen. From one level of glory to another level of glory. Glory is in levels. The Bible says there's one glory of the stars. There's another glory of the moon. And there's another glory of the sun. All those glories are different. Amen. 
So we want to go from one level of glory to another, one level of brightness to another. Amen. It says, Colossians 1.13, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. And because we believe in what he has done for us on the cross, we now have access to this. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. It's talking about the new creation. Amen. He is the image of the invisible God. The Amplified puts it this way. He is the exact living image, the essential manifestation of the unseen God. He is the visible representation of the invisible God. That is who we've been called to be. If we are being conformed to the image of Christ, we too must become the visible expression, the visible manifestation of the image of God or the presence of God. That is, we are carriers of the presence of God. We are the visible manifestation of the presence of God, of the image of God, of the likeness of God. Amen. I mean, the God we serve, is he poor? The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He says the gold is whose own? His own. He says the silver is what? His own. If the scripture is going to be fulfilled, that I'm created in his image. Do you understand what I'm saying? You will say with boldness, it is God that has given me the power to get wealth. Why? Because I am created in his image and according to his likeness. Amen. That is, wealth is not something that you are begging God. Wealth is your divine inheritance. Wisdom is your divine inheritance. Wisdom is your divine inheritance. Understanding is your divine inheritance. It's not like, does God want me to have wisdom or not? No, you have been created in his image and according to his likeness. Hallelujah. You have been created. Why do you walk in the light? Because he is the light. So I must be in his likeness. Why do you walk in wisdom? Because God is the only wise God. He is full of wisdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When Paul said, I pray, now that I've heard of your faith and your love, that you might be filled, that God will give you the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened so that you might know him, know what is the hope. That is, who was praying that is, look, give me spirit so I can be transformed to the very image of God. Give me wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, who he is. The very image. I want to behold him, open the eyes of my understanding so that I can behold him and be transformed to the same image of Christ. Because Christ is the image of God. He is the visible manifestation of the invisible God. Hallelujah. We must manifest God wherever we are. And how am I going to do that? When you got born again, the Bible says you are sealed with what? The Holy Spirit. God gave you his own spirit. He's, that is not, he's giving you the ability to, to, to be conformed to the image of his son by giving you of what? His spirit. Bible says when the Spirit comes, uh, he will give, he will guide you into the knowledge of all truth. Uh, he will show you things to come. 
He will take of what is mine and he will declare it unto you. That's what Jesus said. When the spirit has come, he will take of what is mine. And what did he say was his? All that the father has is what mine. That is why I say that he will take of what is mine and declare it unto you. All that the father has, the authority, the power, the glory, uh, do you understand? Is now mine and the Holy Spirit has come to dwell in you so that this thing can be declared and revealed unto you. You can behold it and you are transformed to the very same image and likeness. Amen. This is what our fellowship with him is about. So we can become more like him and demonstrate and manifest the very image of the invisible God. The dominion that he has given. That is, this is how we will walk in his what? Dominion. The Amplified Clarity says, Now he is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of of the invisible, he is the firstborn of all creation. Hallelujah. Romans 8, 28 puts it this way. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his what? Purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of who? His son. That he might be the what? Firstborn among many brethren. Talking about the new creation. Amen. He is the firstborn amongst many brethren or the firstborn of all creation. We're talking about the new creation now. Amen. Moreover, whom he predestined... This he also called, and whom he called, this he also justified, and whom he justified, this he also what? Glorified. He bestowed his glory upon them. The Bible tells us Christ in us is the hope of what? Glory. That is being conformed to the image of Christ. Being in his likeness is the expectation that we have for the glory of God to be upon us. Our light shine for thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord has what? Reason upon you. The glory of the Lord is supposed to be upon you. We are to walk in that dominion, in that consciousness. Hallelujah. Bible says, I think it's in Colossians, where it says, why do you choose? When you have understood the liberty in that is in Christ, why do you choose to be in bondage to the beggarly elements of this world? to the laws of men, to the will of men? Why do you subject yourself uh, to the beggarly elements in this world when God has called you to liberty? Hallelujah. He has called you to liberty. Let's see what the scripture says about the new creation. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind... It says, put off concern in Ephesians 4, verse 22. It says that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man. That's the Adamic race. Which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and what? Holiness. Put on the new man, created according to God, in true righteousness and in holiness. How is that righteousness? And how did he do that? By infusing us with his life. So ah, I don't know if I can do this holy life. No, the life of God will produce that holiness. The life of God will produce that righteousness. It says we have been justified by the life that he has given. We have been saved by that life, by the very nature of God. His spirit now dwells in us. Sir. Amen. When God created us in his image, he wasn't talking about human form. He was talking about our spirit being. Amen. What Adam experienced was not physical death, uh, was spiritual death. What Christ came to restore was spiritual life. 
And that life has manifestations. As you manifest the life and the glory of God upon the earth, uh, men see it as what we call miracles. But it is simply in the heavenly realm, the manifestation of the glory of God and the life of God. What men call miracles, in heavenly language, it is just the manifestation of the life and the glory and the power of God. Amen. God showed me something. He said, look, in the same way in the physical, you eat food to grow. You drink water. You fill your stomach with food so that you can grow. And you don't want your children to be hungry so that they can grow. The same way you ingest things in the natural to grow in the natural is the same way you must ingest things spiritually so as to grow and to be transformed spiritually. That's why we pray, God, give me your word, because his word is alive and powerful. That's why we pray, endure me with power from on high. You want the things that are spiritual, the spirit of power, the spirit of wisdom. The sp- Do you understand? So that you are being transformed, that as you behold that, as you are seeking that, you put that before you, as you are declaring that, you are receiving it so that you can be transformed, so that you can grow, Hallelujah. What did the scripture say about Isaiah 11? What it said about verse verse 1, it says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of... uh, His roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of what? These are the spiritual things we want. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. He's executing dominion. Amen. And with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord came upon him. Amen. He was endued, clothed with the spirit of the Lord upon him. The spirit of wisdom and counsel. The spirit, hallelujah, of wisdom and understanding, counsel and might. Might, they are talking about power. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Paul prayed, God, give unto us the spirit of what? Wisdom and revelation. God, I pray, give unto us the spirit of power. God, I pray, give unto us the spirit of holiness. God, I pray, give unto us the spirit of understanding. You see what you're feeding upon and what you are beholding and seeking God for so that you can be conformed and transformed to the same image. You have been created in his likeness. God cannot deny it of you. The Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts, which of you having children, if you ask for bread, will give him a stone. If you ask for fish, will give him a serpent. If you ask, do you understand? He says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You are giving your children food so they can grow. He's giving you more and more of his spirit so you can grow. Do you get what I'm saying? The Bible says, to him who has, it's not for you to say, ah, I have the Holy Ghost, and you stop there. The Bible says, this is a spiritual law. To him who has, is what? More given. So that he has what? And uh, and it says, more will be given to him, so that he will have what? An abundance. We want an abundance of revelation, as Paul said, an abundance of the wisdom of God. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth begins. We want an abundance of grace. The Bible talks about the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. Jesus said, I came to give you life and to give it to you, what? More, what? Abundantly. We want an abundance of wisdom, an abundance of knowledge, abundance of understanding, an abundance of his power, an abundance of his might. But you need to ask and keep on asking 
to him who has will more be given. And more will be given to him who continues to ask so that he has. You want to flow in the abundance, not in scarcity. The abundance of the Spirit. Hallelujah. So that you can be conformed to the image of Christ. If Jesus had to pray, what do you think you have to do? Do you know what I'm saying? If Jesus had to know the scriptures, I mean, what makes you think you can avoid that? If Jesus went to the temple to talk with the teachers of the law, what makes people think they can just be sitting somewhere? And, do you understand? If Jesus did it and had a custom of going into the temple, do you get what I'm saying? It's just me, myself, and I, and God. There is a fellowship of the Spirit that requires us coming together. Because God is not going to deposit everything with one person. He's going to give you some. He's going to give you some. Then when we come together and we minister to one another, the whole body is edified. Amen. There's a wisdom he's going to give you that if I don't connect with your wisdom, we will not get the full picture. So that we need each other. Amen. Amen. That's the way God designed it. The leg needs the hand. The hand needs the eyes. The eyes needs the ears. God has, understand the spirit that God has given you. Bible says, God has not given you the spirit of this world. He has given you the spirit that is from God so that you can do what? Know the things that have been freely given unto you by God. These things will now begin to speak in words which not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost what teaches. He begins to declare unto us the things of Jesus Christ. Why is he teaching us to speak? Because the dominion of God is exercised through words. Amen. When God said, Jesus said, peace be still, that dominion was exercised through words. Miracle producing words. Power generating words. Or power ministering words. When Jesus said to Lazarus, he didn't say, hey, Jacob, he said, Lazarus, come forth. He executed dominion over death by speaking. Laz, I am the resurrection and the life. I am going to manifest the glory of God today. Lazarus, come forth. That is who we are. Amen. Not to be subject to the beggarly elements of this world. Not to be subject to the systems of this world. We belong to another system. We belong to another economy, a heavenly economy, the commonwealth of heaven. Why are you submitting your lives to the natural economy? Do you get what I'm saying? You have been created in the image and in the likeness of God. And we have been created to walk in what? Newness of life, to operate from that dimension. Now let's look at what they said to Jesus. Jesus is our example. Colossians 3 verse 8 says, But now you yourselves are to put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Why? Because that is not the nature of God. You are not created that. Do you understand? That is after the Adamic race, which is operating in sin and death. He says, do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, who is, in, who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of him who, you see, everything is according to the image. According to the image of him who created him. That is God, I have to behave like this because this is how you are. God, I have to walk in power because this is how you are. I have to walk in love because you, God, you are love. I have to walk in the light because, God, you are the light. Sin no longer has dominion over me because sin was not found in Christ. Amen. Sin doesn't have any dominion over me. You might not feel like it. You continue to exercise authority. Do you understand what I'm saying? You exercise authority over the desires of the flesh. The Bible says you have been crucified with Christ. You no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in you. You begin to mortify the desires of the flesh by the spirit of God that dwelleth on the inside of you. You release that spirit by declaring words. 
You have a problem with alcoholism. Uh, maybe that's, I remember one testimony, a pastor, he said, he used to smoke, but he will, he, as he was smoking, he would confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All th- he, he was still smoking, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All th- he was saying it, I am the righteousness of God. He was still smoking. One day, he just discovered after some days, there was no desire to smoke. He had used words to subdue his body. When the enemy comes, when you, when you take the smoke or you get drunk, you now start feeling guilty. And you say, oh, God doesn't love me anymore. Instead of exercising, God, forgive me. I fell again. But you are a righteous God. You will forgive me. And you begin to exercise the authority that God has given you. Amen. You begin to exercise. Ha, oh, they said this one. You will never know anything. Say, I reject that in the name of Jesus. I possess the mind of Christ. I have, in fact, I have the mind of what? God. Why? Because I've been created in his image. I have been created in the image of God. Therefore, I, that is, I possess the spirit of God. I possess the mind of God. And I am a member of his body. Hallelujah. That is, we are one with Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. The spirit of Christ dwells in me. I possess the mind of Christ, and I am a member of his body. I am the body of Christ on earth. Hallelujah. I am one with Christ. Bone on my bone and flesh on my flesh. I am one with Christ. I think the way he thinks because I possess his mind. Liz, you begin to declare this word so that he be, do you get, because as a man thinketh in, his, in thinketh in his heart, so he is. You want to become, you begin to say it. You begin to release those words. It says, and you are put on a new man who is renewed in knowledge. Hallelujah. How do you put on a new man? By renewing your knowledge. Oh, renewing your information. Renew, that is, you are functioning according, that is, you are not carnally minded, you are spiritually minded. You are setting your mind on the things of the spirit, not on the things of the flesh. You are setting your mind, it says to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. What does the life of God produce? Power, love. Do you get what I'm saying? Spiritually minded. Because the spirit giveth life. The life of God is operating in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. The Bible says in him was life. That life was the light of men. It illuminates my mind. I function under the illumination of God. There is a spirit in man. The spirit of intelligence. There is a spirit in man. The Bible says, and the inspiration of the almighty giveth him understanding. Because of the spirit of God in me, I possess the understanding of God regarding whatever situation or circumstance I face. The life of God on the inside of me produces the light of God, produces the glory of God. I declare it. You speak to the situation. You speak to the wind. You speak to the storm. Hallelujah. You are operating in dominion. Why? Because you have been created. It is not boasting. Humility to say, look, you are agreeing with God. I was created in the image and in the likeness of God. Therefore, I must function this way. To do anything otherwise is to be in rebellion. Amen. You see, for a long time, this scripture used to, every time I, I used to confess it, you, you know, you twitch inside. It's in First John, where it says, First John chapter 2, verse 20, it says, But you have an anointing from the Holy One. Amen. And you know all things. Have you ever tried confessing that scripture? <laughs> I know all things. But with this understanding, I, ah, I say, kai, kai, kai. Oh, I've been denying myself for so long. It says, you have an anointing from the Holy One. Why? Because I have been created in his image and according to his likeness. Therefore, I have an anointing from the Holy One. And because I have an anointing from the Holy One, I know what? All things. I begin to say it. I know all things. I understand all things. 
I understand all knowledge. I understand all skills. You know that's what they said about Daniel? Because of the spirit of God that was operating in them. That's what was said about the men that built the tabernacle in the wilderness. What did God, even though they were skilled, God still put his spirit of what? Wisdom and understanding. Spirit of in all knowledge and all skill, in all arts. That is, God still put his spirit for them to function. Says there's an anointing you have from the Holy One. And you know all things. Why will you disagree with God? Hey, I have an exam coming. I know all things. Hey, I don't know how to solve this problem. I know all things. That is, you begin to confess from the position of being created in the image and the likeness of God. Don't confess based on where you are. Confess as the way God sees you is what you must say. God sees you as possessing his mind and full of his thoughts. That's why God is going to reveal the deep things of God unto you. The Holy Spirit has come to guide us into the knowledge of our truth. It says in him was life and in life was the light of men. You cannot walk in darkness if his life is on the inside of you. The Bible says he that is born of God. You know this, uh, that scripture too. Ah, how is that possible? You, because you're thinking about the weakness of the flesh. The Bible says he that is born of God cannot sin. Do you understand what I'm saying? He that is born of God, can, but we, we, we shy away. Ah, God, you know I'm weak. Hey, God, you begin to think about the weakness of the flesh. Instead of thinking about you are, born, you are born of God, created in his image and in his likeness, created according to righteousness and what? Holiness. And as the Holy Spirit reveals those things to you, you begin to speak them in words which the Holy Spirit teaches so that you become what you say. Hallelujah. The Bible says there's a spirit in man, a spirit of intelligence. Intelligence is a spirit. Hallelujah. You begin to possess your possessions by the words that you say. Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. You are now created according to the image of Christ. Christ is the visible manifestation of the invisible God. He is the expression, the brightness, the light of the glory of God. The brightness of the glory of God, the expression of the very image of his person. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and all things have become new. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 5, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. Why do you want to have that knowledge of God? So that you can be transformed. Hallelujah. In the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life, talking about eternal life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called you or called us to, called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be what? Partakers of what? The divine nature. The nature of God. The God nature. Amen. You are meant to be partakers of the divine, the God nature. Likeness, partakers of the likeness of God. Partakers of the image of God. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world uh, through lust. As we feed upon him, uh, hallelujah. As we drink of his spirit, uh, we escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. We grow in that image of God, in the likeness of God. You are growing. uh, You are ascending from glory to glory in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 3 says, Second Corinthians chapter 3. From verse give me second, second Corinthians three, let me just Thank God we still carry our Bibles. Second Corinthians chapter 3. 
It says, but even to this day when Moses is read, the veil lies on their hearts. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. The blindfold is taken away. Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. But we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror. That is, the eyes of your understanding has been opened. We all with unveiled face, uh, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. What image are we being transformed into? The glory of the Lord. Do you see that? The image we are being transformed into, Christ in us is the hope for this glory. The image we are being transformed to is the glory of the Lord. It says we also being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The image, God wants to manifest his glory through us. What does the devil want to do? Second Corinthians chapter 4, the, just the next chapter. The Bible says, verse 3, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds, that's why it is a renewal of the mind, a renewal of the knowledge. Whose minds the God of this, that is, it is new knowledge. When you say, ah, I don't know, I don't know. No, you should never say that. Ah, what do you think? Ah, I don't know, I don't know, ah, I don't know. You are agreeing with the Adamic race. The new creation says, I know all things. There is an anointing from the Holy One, and I know all things. You might not feel, you might not feel it. It has nothing to do with your feeling. Has nothing. That is, if you want to enter that place, you will begin to say, I know all things. If you want to get the answer, you begin to say, I know all things. That I have received, I, I don't have the spirit of the world, where they say they don't know. The spirit I have is the spirit that is from God. The spirit, an anointing from the Holy One, and I know all things. God, by his spirit, will reveal unto me the deep things of God. Amen. God, by his spirit, will strengthen me. I cannot walk in weakness. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Do you get what I'm saying? You have been created in the image of God, and according to his likeness, anything that is not consistent with the image of God and the likeness of God, you should banish out of your life. Don't just allow sickness. <laughs> I have pain. Do you... Do you hear God say, ha, 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 I have pain? You don't hear that. This is new. Do you understand? Renew your mind because you have been created in the image and in the likeness of God. Hallelujah. I walk in abundance, financial abundance, because the gold belongs to God and the silver belongs to him. To say I want to be poor is to rebel against the will of God for your life. Because even in heaven, the streets are made of gold. Do you understand? So our God is not a poor God. Amen. It says the earth is the Lord. He owns everything. He is Lord, landlord. Hallelujah. Where was I going? It says... But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, uh, who do not believe. That is, they don't, this one you're saying is just, is your own. They don't believe, lest the light of the gospel of what? The glory of what? Christ. What is the gospel about? The glory of Christ. Uh, we are beholding the glory of the Lord. We are transformed to the same. The enemy doesn't want you to be like him. Like, he wants you to be like him, not like God. The Bible says, look, in the last days, the knowledge of his glory shall cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. God wants his glory, that is his image, to cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. That is why he has commanded you to be fruitful, multiply, greatly increase, propagate his glory upon the earth manifest his glory. Let it cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. You are the carrier of his glory. The enemy doesn't want you to, to experience that. 
says, if it, for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus or in the image of Christ. Do you get that? It says, and we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the excellence of the power can be seen to be of God and not of us. So no matter what you're going through, it says, we are hard pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. (laughs) We are made on the image of God. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. His kingdom and dominion cannot be destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, so that the life of Jesus can be manifested in our mortal body, so that the glory of God can be manifested in our mortal body. Amen. Said so, we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. The Bible says in Romans 8 that the whole of creation, let's look there. And we'll soon finish. Romans 8. Verse 18 says, For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Which means what we are revealing is the image of God. Because that image is of the glory of the Lord. Say, so what you are going through is nothing compared to the image that shall be revealed. Do you get what I'm saying? That when you are going through some instead of complaining, Understand it so that the image of God, the likeness of God can be revealed. Hallelujah. When Jesus went, he said, look, Mary, Martha, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Because he understood that he was the image of, he was the visible image of the invisible God. That as God gives life to the dead, so will he. He said, I do nothing of myself. As I see my father do, that is what I am doing. My father is walking and I am walking. I cannot speak of my own authority. What I hear from him is what I am saying to you. Amen. That's how Jesus functioned in dominion and authority and power. He said, look, I am in the, that is, I must constantly be beholding the image of my father so that I can manifest his image on earth. Amen. He said, I'm constantly beholding, seeking his will. I'm constantly in his presence, beholding his image and his likeness so that I can manifest his image and his what? Likeness on the earth. I'm constantly listening to his voice. He said, did they not, did they? Uh, oh, let's, let's, let me, I'll, I'll get there. Hallelujah. I don't want to go over time. It says, for I consider the suffering of this present time and not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for what? The revealing of the sons of God. The revealing of the sons of God. The Bible said, the word became flesh and we beheld what? His glory. As the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And as we behold his glory, as his word is being revealed... We are transformed to the same image. The revelation of his word uh, reveals the glory of God. As we seek the face of the Lord, to hear what he's saying, to see what he's saying. You want to see what the Lord is saying to you. You are being transformed to the same image. That's why Paul said, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the eyes of my understanding. He wanted to behold the image of God and to be transformed to the same image and manifest it upon the earth. Manifest that dominion upon the earth. It says, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into what? The glorious liberty of the children of God. 
What is that glorious liberty of the children of God? Says the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Says we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror. You are looking at yourself. The glory of the Lord is as if you are looking at a mirror. You are seeing yourself. You are being transformed to the same image you are seeing in that mirror. What you are seeing in the mirror is the glory of God, the very image of God. You are being transformed. So you now begin to function in the dominion and the power and in the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, we'll just give two examples from Jesus. And close with that. Mark John chapter 10, verse 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Then Jesus took up stones again. to, And they took up stones. They just took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered, many good works I have shown you from my who? From my father. So Jesus understood, I am in the, I am his image, visible, rep- so I must be beholding that image in order to represent him properly. Amen. He said, I have shown you, many good works I have shown you from my father, for which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered saying, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy and because you being a man make yourself God. Jesus answered and said, is it not written in your law? I said, you are what? Gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of the Lord or the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the son of God. Bible says the world, the whole of creation is waiting for who? The manifestation of the sons of God. Those whom are, who are receiving the word of the Lord. Amen. Those who are fellowshipping with God to behold his word, to be taught by the spirit. Bible says they that are led by the spirit, these are what? The sons of God. He says... If I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Hallelujah. And they got angry. I'll end with this. John chapter 5 verse 16. It says, for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him. He had just healed a man. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered, my father has been working until now and I have been working. How does he know his father is working? Because he's beholding his image. Do you understand? He's constantly looking to the father. But Bible says God will do nothing until he has what? Revealed it to his servants. So he's like, God, what are you doing? I want to behold your image. I want to know you. What are you up to, oh God? So that I can declare it. So that I can do it. He said, therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also that he said that God was his father, making himself equal to God. They were angry, and some people are going to be angry when you begin to function like this. Now, who do you think you are? You are but a man. You know I am the son of God, a son of light, a son of power, filled with the wisdom of God. I have the mind of God. My body is the body of Christ. Sickness cannot exist. Do you understand? So then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. He was constantly beholding the image of the father. For whatever he does, the son also does in like manner or according to his what? Likeness. He did whatever he saw the father do. He was behaving according to his image and likeness. He was manifesting the image that he beheld. For the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. For as the father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the son gives life to whom he will. 
Jesus did it because he beheld. Amen. When he said, I am the resurrection and the life, it's because he had beheld the Father, the resurrection and the life. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgments to the Son, so that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Hallelujah. Verse 29 says, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus understood. As the image and the likeness of God, he needed to constantly pursue the Father. He needed to constantly behold, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. He was constantly seeking the will of God, constantly seeking the word of the Lord, so that he could represent him on earth. Hallelujah. So he could manifest the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you are watching online, you do not know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Nicodemus said, no one can do these things unless God is with him. Jesus said, unless you are what? Born again. Unless you are born again. In the book of John chapter 1, he puts it this way. Verse 10 says, he was in the world and the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right, the authority to become children of God. It is only those who receive him that will receive the right, the authority, the ability to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name. That is, if you believe in the name of Jesus, you receive him as your Lord and as your Savior. He says you receive the right to become the children of God. Who are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When you believe on the name of Jesus, uh, you are born uh, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, uh, but you are being born uh, of God. As many as receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are being born uh, of God. Hallelujah says, who is the one that is born of God? He that believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Hallelujah. So if you know you want to receive the Lord into your life this, this, this day, receive him as your Lord and Savior. says, anyone that confesses my name shall be saved. You just call upon his name. Jesus, come into my life. Jesus come into my heart. Jesus come into my soul. Jesus come into my body. I receive you today. Jesus, I call upon your name. Save me, spirit, soul, and body. Put me in your kingdom. Oh, I give you thanks for the blood of Jesus that has washed me and cleansed me of all sin. I come into your presence. I now declare that I am born again. I belong unto you, Lord Jesus. You are my Lord. You are my Savior. I surrender myself completely unto you. Fill me with eternal life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Transform me into your very own image. The image of the glory of God. Transform me by your Spirit. From glory to glory by your spirit, O oh God, I give you thanks and I give you praise. I declare from this day forward, I walk, I walk in your light. I walk in your love. 
I walk in your power. I walk in your dominion. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. drop this word in my heart. He says, the works that I do, you shall also do, and greater works shall you do, because you have been created in my image and according to my likeness. The works that I do, you shall also do, and greater works shall you do. I have risen, but you remain on earth with my spirit abiding in you. You have been created in my image and according to my likeness. Therefore, go forth, be fruitful, multiply, greatly increase, manifest my dominion, manifest my glory, and let it cover the earth as the waters covers the sea. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You are welcome to the Covenant Nation, New York State. In fact, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Amen. I'm at a loss for words. But you are welcome. You are welcome. See, God has deposited, God has deposited himself on the inside of us. Let us begin to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God that is at work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God is at work in us to manifest his glory and his power. Amen. He has deposited himself within us, within man. Hallelujah. Christ in us is the hope the expectation that we have for the manifestation of the glory and the power and the wondrous works of God in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome to the Covenant Nation, New York City. Hallelujah. I pray you've been blessed by the word of the Lord today. Amen. Today's service was transmitted online on all our platforms on Facebook and YouTube at the Covenant Nation NYC. So you have another opportunity to watch the message, to share it with others, share it on your platform, share it on your different social media platforms, uh, spread the word of the Lord. Amen. Follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and spread, publish the word of the Lord. Amen. That's what the scripture says. Great was the company that published the word. Amen. Our midweek service continues on Thursday at 7 p.m. on all our platforms on Facebook and YouTube at the Covenant Nation NYC. 
Our daily prayers continue twice daily at 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. and 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. except on Sundays at 9 p.m. Amen. So join us in prayer as we seek the image of God. Hallelujah. We want to behold the image of God uh, to be transformed uh, so that we can be visible manifestations of the invisible God. Amen. And one of the ways God reveals his image unto us is to give us his word. He reveals his word. The word became flesh. The word was revealed uh, and we beheld the glory of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Our weekly verse-by-verse Bible study continues on Saturday, March 2nd, uh, on Instagram Live at the Covenant Nation NYC. We are in the book of John. We are still in chapter 15. So we've done two parts of chapter 15. I think we're up to verse 17. And next week, Saturday, we'll be concluding John chapter 15. Amen. So please join us for our verse-by-verse Bible study. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for our tithes and our offerings. Hallelujah. Let us honor God with our substance. Amen. Bible says, as you sow unto the Lord, he will cause all grace to abound towards you. That there is no loss in giving unto the Lord. He will multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So don't just give as a ritual. Make sure you are speaking words as you sow your seed. That as I sow this seed, that God will multiply my seed sown. He will increase the fruits of my righteousness. He will cause all grace to abound towards me. That I, having all sufficiency in all things, uh, will abound unto every good work. Exercise dominion over your finances. Amen. Over the Bible says, he that giveth unto the Lord gives to the poor, lendeth unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, as you honor God with your substance, it will cause your bands to be filled with plenty and your vats to overflow. Amen. Our God is a God of abundance. As you release unto him, he releases unto you. It says, as you sow, he will, as you sow in secret, he will reward you openly. It says, as you bring your tithes and offerings into the house of the Lord, he will open up the windows of heaven. Hallelujah. And it will pour down blessing that you don't have enough room to receive in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So let's just declare this over what you have purposed to give. Whatever you're giving, you can give online via Zelle to the Covenant Nation NYC at gmail.com. Let's just proclaim this over our tithes and offerings. It says, Our God, you make all grace to abound towards us. Therefore, we always, having all sufficiency in all things, have an abundance for every good work. We thank you, O God, for giving us seed to sow bountifully and bread without scarcity for food. Continue to supply and multiply the seeds we sow and increase the fruits of our righteousness. You supply all our needs according to your riches in glory. We are partakers of the riches of your mercy and grace. Uh, therefore, we cast all our cares upon you because you care for us. Uh, and so we are anxious for nothing. We declare that as we bring our tithes and offerings unto you today, the windows of heaven are continually open over us such that we do not have enough room to receive uh, all the blessings that you are pouring out upon us. Uh, we give you thanks for the overflow uh, of your blessings upon us. Uh, you have rebuked uh, the devourer for our sakes. Uh, therefore, Satan has no access to us, uh, our families, the work of our hands, or the fruits of our labor. We decree that no weapon fashion against us shall prosper for you O God are our refuge and fortress uh, and therefore none can stand against us uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ uh, amen amen hallelujah have a blessed and miraculous week in the mighty name of Jesus amen let's just share the grace in fellowship may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all.
Come along. 